Hello, and welcome to another episode of New Gameplay. Today, I'm your host, Jeff Cork, joined today by my good friend, Leo Vader. Jeff Cork, my friend, how are you doing today? Doing so good. How are you? Really great. So we're looking at the Division 2. I usually get to ask, what are we looking at? And this time, it's all on me. Sorry. I went to beautiful San Francisco, California for an event where we got to play some of the open world, started at the beginning of the game, and then skipped ahead. You have to play some like missions and then skipped ahead to a little bit of end game content also. So this is right near the beginning uh, where we are taking uh, back the house. Taking back the house, the White House. Olympus that is. has fallen. Olympus has fallen. We're going to help it get back up. That's uh, great. This is probably about five minutes after I started playing. So uh, you'll see I'm. Uh, Firing a lot of warning shots just to get everyone <laughs> suppressive fire. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the solo suppressive fire thing, which cool. And you've uh, never played a video game before, is that correct? That's correct. I heard about it, and I figured this time I would finally take the plunge and see what all the fuss is all about. All and right, here it is. It's let's a, let's go sequentially. Cork. Let's do it sequentially. Then, Starting from the start, we yes. can't show character creation at no. this time. No. But did it seem rich? Yeah, it seemed. I hit random several times and. Uh, each random selection was more offensive than the last. <laughs> uh -oh. Let's just say there's a wide array of facial configurations. Uh, there are some that I probably would be fired if I were sh to show it. And we ended up with this this version. I look like one of the, the Joker's goons. Yeah. And she's pretty You're cool. You're a Gotham City imposter. Yeah, she has like some kind of uh, silver contact lens thing going on there. Yeah. Some cool paint on her face. And anyway, so here I've gotten a distressed call. Yeah, distressed call. From the White House, Trump and then, is uh, in trouble. They, they're in trouble, and, and then like those on the radio, they're like, oh, looks like there's a single agent making their way over here. You can do it. Nice. So it's a very exciting so moment. So this is before you can party up, probably? This is before you could probably party up, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Something new I've seen you do already. Yes, sir. Is uh, use a med kit, yeah. which obviously we're in the first one, but now it's a timed thing you have to do. They call it a channel in yes. gaming. Since you have to stop and focus on healing mm -hmm. instead of just being able to inject yourself and have your health back yes. up immediately. And I, one thing that I loved about The Division, and I had forgotten about how much I loved it until I got back into this, I love the way that the cover system works. It is my favorite moving from cover to cover, and at yep. this point I think I'm finally remembering, oh yeah, I need to do that more often, because... Uh, it's a pretty lethal game if you're playing fast and loose like I like to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a cover-based game like this, it becomes all about positioning mm -hmm. and being smart with where you're taking cover. You can just treat it like a shooting gallery, but that's less effective and less fun. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So now you want to save the White House, correct? I want to save the White House. You're pro-White House. I am pro-White House. This is not a political game, though. No, Never no, no, no. The no, fact no. that the White House has been taken over by bad guys in the most apolitical way ever... There are... As they were taking it over, they said, "This we're just doing this randomly. <laughs> this just happens to be This is the place. first house we saw. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So they were saying, uh, remember the first division, the post office was kind of your base of operations. Yeah. They said that didn't really, wasn't really an iconic location in New York. It wasn't exciting to people. Wasn't, people hated it. No, they didn't say that, but... It pissed me off. Pissed me off every time. Now we got the White House, so that's your your base of operations, which is very exciting. That's um, honestly cool. Some say, some said you could never go inside the White House in a video game. And to that we say, suck it, Joe Juba. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Uh, so at this point, I'm just kind of going through the menus and, and look at all the stuff. I think I, uh, for this build, they did not have any of the cosmetic drops available. So every, you'll notice... Uh, Unless we skip ahead a lot. I pick up a lot of gloves and knee pads. Yeah. I'm not getting new pants or shirts or any of that kind of stuff. But rest assured, the oh, okay. if you're into the cosmetics it's stuff like I am typically, there's just an abundance of that, they say. Oh, All right. We talked to a guy, and it was very exciting. He says we need to talk to his uh, the quartermaster to get a, some equipment. And then we've got to go talk to a person named Odessa who needs our help. And she's in one of the uh, strongholds. Or not strongholds, safe houses, sorry. So you're still running around talking to people. Still talking to people. Here's the quartermaster, and here I've got a couple of skills that I've unlocked. And looking, as you can see, some of them are unavailable in this build, but I'm a huge fan of the turret. Yeah. So you got three different options there. I just uh, The sniper is more of a manual. You, you choose the target and do it this way. I like the assault one, which is just kind of like a... If you're a big dumb guy like I am, you drop it, and it attacks stuff for you. Yeah, not a thinking man's a gadget. A classic. It's kind of a bludgeon. Yes. Well, that's cool. Yeah. That's fun. 
And then, uh, what else did I grab? I think I grabbed the Seeker Mine, I believe. Drone is interesting, because, like you said, first off, it's mm -hmm. interesting that all these different variations are available from the jump. Mm-hmm. I remember those used to be things you had to unlock in the Division 1. Yes. But now right away you're choosing a specific way to go. And you can them. see, real quick, look at the slots there for the different mods. Like a drive slot, targeting slot. There's like, each of these uh, abilities has like a whole bunch of different things you could mod as well. That's cool. There's going to be a ton of depth there. I think for the assault rifle or the turret, you could have different uh, barrels and things like that. So presumably shift things significantly. So. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things to do in the Division 1 is just build an interesting uh, build. Mm -hmm. Just being creative with the systems. There's plenty of room for that in the first one, at least when I got into it in 1.8 or something. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's one of the things that people had a big criticism with with exactly. the Division at launch. Once you got to the end game, there was not a whole lot to do. So a lot of people fell off. And then those of us who returned later benefited from a pretty robust series of things that they did add. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that uh, with the Division 2, it's going to launch with the vast majority of that stuff in place. The so, end game content? Exactly. So we actually have a little bit of that we can show later. Cool. I like that. Anthem also recently did that uh, from, from Bioware. They, they ran a preview event where they gave a sense of what the end game would be like. It's interesting that Developers are learning to get ahead of that since they know yeah. that that's something people take into serious consideration mm -hmm. when getting into these types of games. Yeah. The neighborhoods you'll be moving through are hyena territory. So we were running a four person squad and but I think I soloed it out in the open world for a lot of the time. Very cool. Very it badass. was very cool. Very badass. Lone wolves yep. need apply. So you spent more time in the open world. Yes. You were initially worried because you liked the Division 1's look so much mm -hmm. with the, the snow-covered city and your snow outfits. Yes. Were you sold on warm DC anymore after spending more time there? I think that maybe, like, on its face, this is a little less interesting, but I think at the same time, uh, the setting does allow them to do more with the weather so there's rain there's fog things that affect gameplay like uh, i don't know that we'll see it here but i did play a section where it was foggy and it was really difficult to discern where the enemies were at times which is kind of exciting yeah that's interesting thank you that's a very smart observation man <laughs> combat feels largely the same yeah it feels great and uh one of the things that i really enjoyed about it is i at a certain point, picked up a shotgun and equipped it, and I think the division does shotguns very well, where they're not like, if you're farther than you know ten feet away, they're just completely ineffective. Like they're very deadly at at, at range, also. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. Cool. For me, it's nice. And whoever set up DC, very uh, thoughtful placement of explosive tanks and cans everywhere. So if you like setting enemies on fire. Including on people's backs, I hope. Oh, did, did you see a lot of fire extinguishers on backs? I didn't see any fire extinguishers on backs. There's some guys with chain guns, and if you shoot the belts, you can make the guns lock up. You know, force okay. them to reload, kind of break their, their firing animations, which is fun. I love the weak points on enemies in the Division 1. It was oh, yeah. so fun to go for those yeah. while my friends were just assaulting them from the front. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they've got, like, armor that, that breaks off, too, so it kind of... Gives you more of an in-universe explanation as to why it takes uh, 2,000 shots to finally bring a guy to his knees. <laughs> right. Now those people are scavenging, it says. Yes. Not for long. These guys, this is the, the hyena faction, right? There are three main factions in the campaign. These guys are kind of the scavengers. Okay, this is where this video ends. Here. Right. All right, we jumped a little bit ahead. Anyway, the hyenas, their big gimmick is that they are... Uh, uh, fond of using this drug called spice, which they inhale and a little icon above their heads, you know, like when they're going like, to throw a grenade, you see a grenade icon to give you time to react or like prevent them from doing it. Uh, uh -huh. Here a little, it's like a pill appears and when they are under the influence of spice, it gives them a little more uh, uh, vigor and confidence to run up to you with a club <laughs> and, and try to brain you. With it, so. That's what I do. Absolutely. When on recreational <laughs> drugs. Yeah, big Spice fan. Yeah. I, I like that. I like having each faction be a little more distinct like mm -hmm. that. A little more clever. Yeah, there are like plenty of times where, as with any game that has multiple factions, that they don't get along, so you can just watch dudes fight each other. Pop quiz. Yes, sir. Can you name the other factions and what they're like? Yeah, there are the True Sons. They are kind of the commando 
mili ex-military guys who believe that they have the right to take over what is left of society. And oh boy, this. And do they? Uh, I disagree. I think oh. I think the division. I believe the outcasts. Is that the other one? <gasps> I think. Oh, don't quote. Me. I may have that one wrong, but I think they're real stinkers. Okay. There's also a fourth faction, the Black Tusks, and they're kind of like the PMC. They're the faction that actually like they have uniforms. They are equipped with high-end military gear. They can launch drones. They have those uh, quadruped, big dog-like uh, robots that will attack. I think you will see some of those a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, it's a completely different deal when you fight with them. To address something I just saw and didn't know about and is very exciting to me. Yes. When you were hovering over that loot, mm -hmm. instead of picking it up, there was a button to just deconstruct it right away. It's very cool, right? I love that. That's yeah. so clever. Instead of just cluttering up your inventory until eventually you have to go through mm -hmm. it and deconstruct everything you're not going to use. Yep. That is such a clever feature. I think other games will probably rip that off, honestly. Yeah. Just give me the raw materials. Yeah. So I'm standing outside the gates, uh, which is a perfect time to just uh, look at my loot, apparently. Yeah, uh, just look down at your legs and put your back <laughs> to the door that just opened. That's very smart. <laughs> I was born in a barn. Using right. the trucks as doors. It's very cool. Very cool. Oh, no. Don't do it, Cork. Uh... Nobody cares whether you can kill the dogs or not. <laughs> Nobody's going to do it. <laughs> you can. There are, like, uh, wild animals in the city. There are, like, ravens or crows, uh, deer, dogs, raccoons, rats. Uh, I can confirm that all of them can be killed, and uh, according to Ubisoft, there's no benefit to doing so. There's never going to be a hunting mission. You can't skin them and make wallets. Even Far yeah. Cry has moved away from that, so... Yeah. It's just the thrill of shooting a golden retriever, you absolute monster. We noticed Leo. a huge uptick in people crying since we made you <laughs> kill these beautiful animals yeah. in all these games. So this is a safe house, and I'm going to help Odessa find her daughter. And these sections, there's a lot more uh, kind of a, a gameplay loop built around uh, helping them find materials and expanding them so that they improve over time. I. Uh, Mm -hmm. which is kind of neat. It's not just a static area that you visit. You kind of have a little bit of gameplay attached to it. And there's a ton of like side missions and uh, things that pop up here. These these return. Uh, I run past it. I'll get to it later. Those repelling things that oh, you drop yeah. down the ropes. Cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, to, to kiss Ubisoft ass a little bit. What's that? To kiss Ubisoft ass? Yeah. I think they're very good at having a ton of unique assets in their games. Mm -hmm. By virtue of them being such a gigantic studio, I'm sure. Yes. But in the Division 1, every hideout feeling so different and looking completely different. I, yeah. I feel like very few studios can achieve that at the rate that Ubisoft puts out games, you know? Yeah. Obviously, there's 15 different Ubisofts putting out games, but I still appreciate it about them. The sun never sets on Ubisoft. Well put. Well put. Thank you. Yeah, so now as you can see, the whole world is the dark zone. The sun goes down. No, there's only there's three of them, but they're scattered throughout. We did a whole video on. It's just a joke. The dark zone. Yeah, get on. Come on, guys. Just trying to have some fun here. Yeah, come on. Line it up. Yeah. What was that little monument indicator? Uh, that's so you can uh, see a cinematic view of points of interest. So, if the theater that we seen earlier that I just discovered, or like the White House, for instance, just. Let's see you appreciate the grandeur. It does it, at least in this build, it didn't go away after doing it the first time. So oh. I activated it like two or three times thinking, you know, I see a prompt that says hit down to observe. I'm like, oh, is this still? Oh, well. <laughs> I love grandeur. Yeah, this is seven months after the events of the first division. Things have really gone to hell. They're worse. Yeah. And you can, apparently, like, the, these guys are going to gather food. You can accompany them, provide backup. As they oh, do their little routine. It's a real yeah. thing they go to do. Yeah. It's not just flavor text. Yeah, there's a point later when I walk out of the base and then they're returning with some supplies that they've found. And then also, like, if you're in an area like a control point, if you have built up a safe house and helped them out, you could shoot a flare in the sky and call them for assistance and they will actually help you fight. The reason being, like, this time really? around the civilians are in the world because they've survived and are good at fighting and are able to kind of survive on their own. That's very interesting. Unlike the last guys that just wanted water for pants. 
Scum of the earth. Scum of the earth, exactly. <laughs> Alright, we're jumping way ahead. This is some endgame stuff. We they, jumped ahead 50 hours 50, about. <laughs> 50 right? hours, exactly. So, uh, we've got tons of high-end weapons and gear. You can see I've got a nice new shirt that I'm really into. And this is against the Black Tusk factions. You can see they've got this one of those like big dog robots that uh, is a real problem. And <laughs> these guys will call in drones, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. and they're super well equipped. One of the cool things about Endgame in this is that uh, once that kind of section of your journey begins, this faction does appear just in the open world also, so they're not just isolated to these kind of encounters or like these, these uh, what do you call them, the strongholds or anything like that. Uh -huh. And do they get unique events in the open world or do they kind of replace where they just randomly pull we a We didn't get to mess around in the open world that was infested with the Black Tusks, so okay. I can't say You don't exactly. even know if it really happens. You're just taking Ubisoft's word for it. It's basically true. It's hearsay at this point. Yeah. We're the at the National Air and Space Museum. Which yeah, that's cool. This is what I'm talking about with the unique assets. <laughs> like the, yeah, there's the like cool a bit of a narrated enemies. tour talking about the grandeur of space and stuff, and the enemies are shooting from above. And it took me, I had to do like a quick 360 just to get my bearings here. Yeah, uh, those guys like to be set on fire. They like it. <laughs> they like it a lot. <laughs> okay, it's kind of their the thing. The pervert faction. Yeah, they're a pervert faction. Black tusks. In the end game here, do you have any abilities or guns or anything that made it more fun? Anything? Yeah, it was there? it was like night and day because I've been playing you know the the other version for several hours and kind of using the best weapons I could scrounge and I was still having a pretty good time. But this time was just uh, ridiculously overpowered. Like nice SMGs. I had a, a scoped rifle that was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so it was super fun. Here I had the sniper turret equipped. Which I don't think I liked it quite as much because, like I said, I'm, I'm how are you I'm giving lazy. it targets? Is that what the LB is? Yes. When you're aiming, you exactly say, hit Shoot LB and then it kind of does its thing. I didn't. I found that it was a little too fussy for the way that I like to play. Yeah. Where I was just like, I don't want to micromanage this other thing when I, I'd rather just take care of it myself. It sounds cool to me conceptually, but yeah, yeah. if you're already aiming at them, you yeah. know, and kind of drop them in three seconds, exactly. It's generally, the easiest way to go. Yeah. How about perks on the weapons? Anything game changing? Uh, notice. nothing really. There was a nice warning shot. I was saying, yeah, get don't out of put here, your sir. head over where that bullet went. Nope. Look out. Uh, no, I didn't really see any super great perks or anything like that. It, it's, I will say, it's it's difficult to to jump in and like, here's all this end game stuff and just like, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's my ex my excuse for not completely understanding everything at that point. Sure, it's it's fed gradually for a reason. For yeah, sure. easier to understand. Yeah, but I, I really enjoyed that part of the division one as well. The variety, having mm -hmm. a, having a sniper that would embed bullets in people and yep. then explode three seconds later. Oh yeah, like you all, the, all the exotic, super cool. cool fun stuff in the in the first division, and I fully expect that to be the same, if not even better. I was all excited to go back to the division one. Yeah, and get some of those shields and stuff. Yeah, that game it crashes every five minutes for me now. Why? I don't know. It never did it before. I reinstall it. It still happens. It yeah. says that I disconnect from the server. It's not really a crash. It's just a server disconnect. Oh. To, to What's the opposite of kissing Ubisoft ass? Uh, kicking. Kick, to kick some Ubisoft <laughs> ass. Yeah. That makes me sad. Yeah. So hopefully this game is better at launch. Yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously they've said all the right things about how they're trying to pick up where the Division 1 left off, but mm -hmm. it remains to be seen if any company can really do that. Yeah. You know, it's a very... It's a, Risky to start fresh, honestly. Yeah. But I, I have high hopes for this. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much for listening to me yak about The Division 2, Leo. And a private beta starts really soon. Yeah, it's true. So for people who pre-ordered and for people who got in the private beta... You're going to have some fun. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say you're going to have some fun. Yeah. Thanks, Bye. Mark.